Today you will learn about the law of syllogism and how it is used in geometry. Let's begin. Logic in geometry allows you to see connections and patterns, to make leaps of understanding from the single event to universal truths. Logic is an attempt to use strict rules of thinking to reach reliable results or conclusions about claims or premises. Within logic, various types of arguments, premises, and conclusions can be formed. A syllogism is a method of reasoning by drawing a conclusion from two premises. The particular pattern of a syllogism is that the first major premise shares something with a second minor premise, which in turn leads to a conclusion, like this. I am creeped out by all spiders. That enormous tarantula is a spider. I am creeped out by that enormous tarantula. Statements 1 and 2 are called the premises of the argument. If they are true, then statement 3 must be a valid conclusion. It is important to know that a syllogism can present faulty premises. The conclusion to any faulty premise is automatically invalid, like this example. All animals have four legs. A snake is an animal. All snakes have four legs. The conclusion here makes no sense because the major premise is wrong. Anything built from the incorrect major premise that all animals have four legs is then invalid. A syllogism can also have a faulty conclusion from valid premises, like in this example. Most people get nervous when they tell lies. You appear nervous. You must be lying about something. The major and minor premises are fine. Most people really do get nervous when they tell lies, and you really could appear nervous. But the conclusion is faulty because the minor premise could be explained by dozens of other things. Maybe you have to give a public speech, or maybe you have a job interview tomorrow and that's why you're nervous. In a syllogism, the major premise is a broad statement, such as, all triangles have three sides and three interior angles. The major premise is often a conditional statement beginning with if. The minor premise scales down the major premise to something local, exact, or familiar, such as, this is a three-sided polygon. The minor premise can also be a conditional statement beginning with if. The conclusion connects the universal truth of the major premise to the immediate example of the minor premise. Then this three-sided polygon is a triangle. Conclusions often begin with then. Taking the same example from earlier and recasting the premises as conditional statements, we could write, If all triangles have three sides and three interior angles, and if this is a three-sided polygon, then this three-sided polygon is a triangle. The law of syllogism is also known as reasoning by transitivity. It is similar to the transitive property of equality, which says, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. The power of logic is seen over and over in geometric proofs. When you substitute terms, for example, you are following the law of syllogism. If angle A is supplementary to angle B, and if angle B equals 115 degrees, then angle A equals 65 degrees. The law of syllogism directs you to use deductive reasoning, which allows you to work down to specific examples from generalized postulates and theorems. Logicians usually assign letters to these parts of the syllogism. Statement 1. If P, then Q. Statement 2. If Q, then R. Statement 3. If P, then R. If I study each subject 15 minutes a night, then I will get good grades. If P, then Q. If I get good grades, then I will get into good colleges. If Q, then R. If I study each subject 15 minutes a night, then I will get into good colleges. If P, then R. Your premises must be related to ensure a valid conclusion. If your minor premise, if Q, then R, had been completely unrelated to your major premise, then no valid conclusion can emerge. Now you know the law of syllogism and how to use it.